Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Two days after the PDP in Ekiti State held its governorship primaries, the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, held its own governorship primaries uh, in the state yesterday with uh, Biodu Oyebanji, a former secretary to the state government, defeating other aspirants to merge winner. Oyebanji, believed to be Governor Kaede Faimi's preferred aspirant, was declared winner with 101,703 of the votes cast. The primary was not without controversy as not less than seven aspirants withdrew from it in protest at what they alleged to be irregularities. Now joining us to analyze this involvement is um, uh, Ibrahim Oshinowo, who is a former member of the APC Presidential Campaign Council. Good morning to you, Mr. Oshinowo, and thanks for joining us. Good morning, my brother. I'm glad to be here. How are you guys? All right. Um, um, what's your take on, on, on this emergence of uh, the former secretary to the government of uh, the Ekiti, of Ekiti State as the uh, winner of a governorship primary in that state? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, it's a great day for democracy. I think, um, of course, in APC, there is no loser, there is no winner. We are all colleagues, you know. I am um, calling on my brother, Senator Kwame Bamindele, Senator uh, Adeyeye, and co, you know, to support the the candidate, it was, the uh, primary was conducted, of course, in the full glance of the press and other stakeholders across the um, 16 local government of the state. So, you know, without rancor, there is no, you know, you know, um, 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 issue of, you know, uh, ballot snatching, you know, legalism and the rest. There's no even gunshot, you know, fired yesterday. So I think it's a welcome development. So I don't want us to you ponder more about that. You know, there has to be a winner, one winner, just one winner, and there has to be a loser. So, and they are not losers, you know, they are co-contestants, and they should work for our party to emerge and support governor for Carl I think that's the best shot, you know. The winner has emerged, so we have to move on. So, don't forget that the PDP has conducted their own, and I of Ayoshe is not, you know, a cheap goat in there. It's a grassroots man. They have to look for a way to tame him so that we can continue, you know, uh, to govern the Ekiti state and stop the rotational you know, leadership in the state. Ekiti state is traditionally a progressive state, so we have to cluster that you know, victory yesterday and ensure that we have a um, 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 resounding victory of even far, far over 120,000 votes that Oyebanji scored yesterday. So I believe um, they should work with the governor and the candidates. So we thank uh, the governor that came to conduct the election. It was actually a thorough election. Uh, uh, Mr. Sino, thank you. you. You said that the aspirants uh, like um, uh, Ope Mibamidele and Co. should um, pull together and support um, Governor Faide Kaimi, uh, or Kaide Faimi rather, uh, following the emergence of this, uh, his, um, the, the former SSG as the flag bearer of the APC. When you say they should support Governor Kaide Faimi, he wasn't on the, on the ballot. Um, he was not con contesting. So how do you mean? What do you mean by the uh, aggrieved... Um, Aspirants should support Kyle Defy Me, who is the current governor. Let me tell, let me tell you, whether they like Kyle Defy Me or not, he is a leader, party leader in the state. He is a legitimate party leader in the state. And he has not shown any sign that the Oyebanji, so called the guy Oyebanji, is his candidate. He allowed them to go to the field and win a match. So there is nobody pointing at Kyle Defy Me as the sponsor of the guy. The guy has been in the state. He has been a chief of staff. He has been a secretary of the state government. He has been a commissioner. He has been there since the day of um, 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 Chief Adebayo, the, the president minister for trade and investment. So if you know his history, he's a grassroots man. He has been in the state. So to support Kyle Defy, I mean, I, I mean is that he is the party leader and delivering the state for APC after his exit after eight years is, you know, what they should be thinking. And after all, Yebanji, the likes of Kayemi and the rest of them can come on board and might, you know, and become the governor. But right now, we can't afford to lose AKC. You know, AKC is a predominantly a swing state, like Oyo State. So we don't want to lose AKC to opposition again. If you lose AKC to opposition, a state like where you have five cow, the five, uh, uh, where you have five, uh, five or she, and Oyo State, that's going to be spelled doom for APC in, in the, the southwest. So they have to work with the governor and the candidate and the party at large. You know, some of them are still in the Senate. Some of them are senior, have been a senator. You know, it happens on both sides. Like in PDP, you have uh, Mrs. Um, 
um, Oluji, what is it called? Olujimi. Yeah. I bet Olujimi. He's a president senator. Opayemi is also a bad president senator. So they should work with the governor, the candidate, and the party. The governor, I mean that they should work with the party because he's a party leader in the state. Uh, uh, um, the, the, the winner um, uh, is... is um is widely believed to be the anointed candidate of the, the incumbent governor. We know um, the antecedents of, of governors over the past few elections since 1999. Um, each time a governor is leaving, he would prefer to put uh, an aspirant who will be loyal to him in government house so that he can continue to have some sort of influence on the affairs of the state. And uh, uh, you would agree with me that you know, most uh, governors would not want to put politically strong and independent-minded candidates um, you know, to, to, to succeed them so that they can continue to exert control. Uh, you are saying the former secretary of the state government, who now is the flag bearer of the APC, is a grassroots man. Um, are you telling me he's more popular than the aggrieved uh, uh, aspirants like Senator Okpayemi Babinele, who has held positions um, right now? He's in the Senate. He's been a commissioner in Lagos State before, and he's widely known. Are you telling me that this secretary, former secretary of the state government, is more popular than Senator Dayo Adeye uh, and others? Are you telling me he's, he's more known, widely known across the state than these people, since that's what you're talking about? I think you have answered a couple of questions that you're asking me. Let me go down the, you know, the road and so that I can at least you know, expose you to a few things I don't know. You said Dr. Emima Dele has been a commissioner in Lagos State, not in the State. This guy has spent, I'm not his spokesperson. But he, he's met. a senator right now. He has won a central look, election. Look, election is won in this country by structure. If I bring you out as APC candidate and the structure of party is there, you will become a senator. I'm not saying Dr. Emima Dele is no, you know, it's a low belt that you, you're not going to, you know, you know, find him as a worthy candidate in the APC. Yes, he is. All of them are immensely qualified. But Oye Panji is not a fry. He is, has been in the state. He's a local boy. When they say somebody is a local boy, he spent most of his political career in the state. He's a local, he's a pure breed local boy. That is not, he is not, he's just a gentleman, you know, from the distance and from few of my friends that know him. He's just a gentleman. Boy in the state, Oye Banji is not who is not, I don't know, he's not a chief god. So he knows he has been in the state as a commissioner, chief, chief of staff, he has been in the state as a PhD, you know, so many things. He has uh, has, so has, many has things. he contested and won an election before? I mean, you were the one talking about popularity, you were the one who brought up the issue of the candidates and their yeah. credentials and the fact that uh, uh, Oyebanji will mm -hmm. uh, be the best candidate in terms of his his uh, his extension into the grassroots of Ekiti State. But um, has he contested, mm -hmm. just to know him better, has he contested any election and won in, in Ekiti State before? Look, when Governor Fahadé came, he has never contested for a local government chairman. He has never contested for councillor. But as at that time, the structure of the party and the people of the state believe that they need somebody that is more exposed and enlightened like him. Same way, Oye Banji, uh, same way to Governor Deye, Governor, uh, Minister Deye, Mr. Deye crossed into from PDP to APC in less than in less than a year, and he got a senatorial ticket, <clears throat> and he was elected a senator. Okoyemi moved to Ekiti from Lagos. In a party that is well organized and structured, he won election back to the Senate. So what are, what are we talking about? So if you are saying that <clears throat> Oyebanji, who has spent most of his lifetime in Ekiti State, most of his political career in Ekiti State, is, is not popular as a grassroots, of course, you know, that person must be a joker. I'm not going to measure no, I'm, I'm just asking if, if he has contested and, and won an election. It, it doesn't really matter. No, I, I, just I to know. Somebody... Are you saying no, he hasn't? Okay. He hasn't. Let okay. me tell you. Okay. Look at Governor of Lagos State. I'm giving you instances. People who have never contested an election, and they contested for governor, and they won. Governor of Lagos State has never, been, uh, a, you know, sought for elective position. But he was nominated for a governor, and he won. He won a primary against a sitting governor, a sitting Lagos State governor. Today is a almost three year and a half year governor in Lagos State. And so many, many, many others like that. So it doesn't really matter whether you have contested or not. What matters is your popularity, you know, your consistency with the party, your loyalty to the leadership of the party, and to the people, finally, to the people of the state who will be the final judge in this case.
Mm. So um, let's also talk about the issue of internal democracy here because that seemed to be a you know, major concern and uh, the back and forth at the time with the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, whether to adopt you know, uh, direct primaries, mm. as it were, or go for indirect primaries and consensus. This is still crux of the matter. But you also have a situation where seven aspirants, according to the report, have withdrawn from the particular, I mean the polls, uh, talking about the primaries that were conducted on the grounds that uh, they had party loyalists in the system. So w would you say that, you know, the Akiti governorship primary election that was conducted uh, promoted the issue of uh, internal democracy? Would you also describe it as fair? And secondly, um, don't you think that with, with all of these issues right now, uh, the abnormalities that's been reported that had witnessed with the APC uh, in Akiti state, would this not further divide the party and cause internal crisis in Ekiti State? You know, direct primary is the most, is the most linked, you know, democratic process of nominating a, can a candidate, a pure one of that Ekiti. You know, I don't uh, normally, I don't always measure, you know, uh, um, 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 the authenticity of a primary with crowd that you, of course, that is in there. But what I can say is that what I can say is that what happened in the kit yesterday from my observation and a few members of the committee who are friends of I, it was a pure and genuine and legitimate primary that was conducted yesterday. And that shows that there is a high democratic process that played out in the kit yesterday. Me, me, we now got emerged from all the 16 local government and it has been happening. People, when you notice that you cannot win in a primary, you will reject, you know, it happens in PDP, it happens in APC, it happens in, you know, in other party. You know, when you notice that you can't win an election, you will reject it. And that is the, you know, the joker of politicians. You know, so it's not a big deal. What happened, the process was transparent, the process was clear, and it shows that, you know, we are developing in our process of nomination. So it's not a big deal, you know, the process is clean and clear. So, so would you say that it was uh, the, the method of adoption for, you know, the governorship candidate was uh, a consensus or it was, you know, direct primaries that was adopted or indirect primaries? What would you call what happened in that election? That's a direct primary, no question about that. Nobody can question that. In, that a, in, a case, in a case where you have seven candidates withdrawing from the election on the grounds that you have, uh, you know, the, the, the godfather system actually playing where the, the former governor is having a hand uh, influencing the system, you call that direct primaries? I, I'm sure you have to be careful of your choice of word. Those are allegations, you know. I can tell you're a thief, but I have to prove that you're a thief. Those are mere allegations. And you know the politicians, you know how we do, you know, a lot of shenanigans will take place. Of course, Governor Chicago, they fire me, for instance, has the right to just one vote in his world. So who are you talking about? So those are informations. And honestly, I don't really react to, you know, allegations and, you know, and the rest of it. I want a fact so that we can discuss facts, you know, genuine figures on the table. Those are mere allegations. I don't want you to get bothered about that. Those are mere allegations. God for that playing out. So, 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 so... so so, so let's also talk about the fact that a lot of people are not dissatisfied with the system of, you know, picking who would be the flag bearer of the elections come June. Uh, do you see further agitations? Do you see people going to court? You know, in APC, I can speak for APC, you know, you have the right, after exhaust, exhausting all the, you know, um, the parties, you know, reconciliable, you know, conciliation process, you have the right to go to court. And challenge if the process is not clear. It doesn't really matter. It, APC is a democratic party. You can go to court and challenge the process if you feel it's not clear. But you have to make sure you endorse all the process, the internal process of the party, to make sure that you know things are looked into critically. But you can't be. You have to be. Sometimes you have to be a good loser. You have to be a good loser because it might be your turn tomorrow. You know, it has to be. It has to be a good leader. I can see two senators out of those guys that you are talking about were elected from a direct primary process, and people did not challenge them. You know, you have to be a good loser sometimes. You you, do, you can't win all the times. You know, so those are the things I I, I, I see. You know, sometimes you be a good loser. So let for twenty for June nomination, 
Uh, a lot of things is going to play out. <clears throat> I want us to be a little bit, you know, mute on that because hopefully the president will, will sign the amended, amendment, amended, um, you know, electoral bill. Let's see what the if he signs. If he signs, of course, the atmosphere will change. Obviously, so we'll be able to discuss further, you know, details about the new bill that will channel the process of the election and nomination. So I think we can't give a good judgment to that right now until the bill is signed. Then we'll see. Um, what's in the bill, then of course we can we can share more light about that. Uh, but without the bill that is pending on the table of the president, I think we have a limited uh, conversation. We can, we can have a limited conversation. Uh, I mean, Mr. Mr. Brian Oshino, Oshino, you, you are a politician. Um, you have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. You were a member of the presidential campaign council of the APC. Um, mm -hmm. If you were to contest an election primary or a primary election in the APC, um, and mm -hmm. you go to that election uh, the day before the election you find out that the presiding officers and the returning officers are all government appointees or loyalists of the governor in the party because everybody knows who everybody is you know who is who who supports who uh, will you be worried about the the, uh, the the outcome of the election and the fairness of that election for someone like you who is not may not be considered a um, in this scenario, uh, close to the governor. You said uh, an ally of the problem. You know, all the aspirants that you mentioned that you are the first... Go government appointees. Government appointees. Government appointees. I, I don't know who the government appointees you are talking about. In PDP, you know, I don't like to propose into the affairs, but you are pushing me there. In PDP, Farage is not a city governor. Governor Udo, who is the chief electoral returning officer, is a governor, is a sitting governor. They know themselves. Only do you mean know the sitting governor? Everybody knows themselves. I have friends in PDP, I have friends in APC. Do you get what I mean? So nobody is going to say because he's a governor for everybody. He's a chief No, no, I, 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 asked you, I asked you a simple question, sir. Um, yes. If you went into an election with the knowledge that your one of the opponents, your opponents won, uh, is, mm. is, is, is preferred by the governor, and that the returning officers and presiding officers for that election, uh, who have been appointed for that election, are government appointees. Um, will you will you be confident in the fairness of that primary? My brother, yeah. these are mere allegations. Will, I heard will, you. Will, will you will you be it, it, will you be fair? Will, will be be confident in the fairness of such and a that primary? That question should not be posed to me. When I'm, I'm by grace of God, I'm, I'm coming. I'm I'm coming to the Senate. Or to ask of reps, by grace of God, when I make my final declaration, you will know. I will inform your channel. Then, by grace of God, you can pose that question to me. But any hey, kitty, only hey, kitty. I'm a party lawyer, man. You know, uh, Governor Faiga of the family is the, is the leader in the Southwest. Is the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum. So, you know, I, I, answering that question directly might not be fair on anybody because. Governor Faiga of the by virtue of being a governor and a, and a leader in this country, will know. It. Um, we know a lot of people, and those guys we are talking about are also senators, they are influential, they know a lot of people as well. So, those questions cannot really directly answer by me because they all, all of them know this particular person. And besides, I don't want to bother you too much. Governor Kyle Defiani has a constitutional right to support whoever he feels is capable, he will go to the ballot with just one vote in this family, just one vote. So why I mention it? Uh, but, but 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 Ibrahim, Ibrahim you know, you, you, you said president. you said Governor Faimi is the leader of the party in the state, and he can Obviously. support. Yes. So he and you were saying he can support whoever he wants support to. Okay, fine. Yes. In this case, Oyebanji allegedly. Um, 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 so if he is the party leader, allegedly, and he has a supporter, and you say he can support whoever he wants to, which means he probably would, would have. So he's supporting someone. Um, if. He has the influence as party leader in, in, in the who appointment. The in the, no, you said he. Well, he's, he's actually widely believed to be Oyebanji, but 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 let's leave that out. Who no, makes no, you feel that he's not supporting? No, uh, let's, uh, put, let's put that aside. Um, if you went into and I asked again with the governor's influence, um, we have presiding officers and returning officers. Uh, what they are saying is that they they agree with the aspirants is that they notice that the names of the re presiding officers and the returning officers are government appointees. And these are the people who fill the result sheets. So they don't have confidence in the fairness of this, this election. So they will not even go there to be embarrassed. You know? so, so isn't that something to be concerned about? 
you know, that you don't have neutral people um, appointed or people who may not necessarily be, or just a mix. You know, you take, you take people from different factions and different camps and say, okay, let's have all these people here, not government appointees. You know, you know, what, is, you know what is good about you know what is good about this party? In a couple of days, maybe on Monday, they can approach it's all the allegations you are you you know you are mentioning. I'm not aware of it that all those guys are all those I don't know the returning officers are government appointed. Um, can, can you hear me, uh, Mr. Sino? Well, uh, this is what. Um, the seven, some of the seven aggrieved aspirants who withdrew from the race in the early hours of Thursday are saying they're saying that they've noticed that names of uh, the names they've seen of um, the returning officers and the residing officers are government appointees and loyalists of the governor in the APC, and they don't they're not confident of what we've written down as a result um, that day. I don't know if I, I didn't watch. I don't know if they uh, the plan to ensure that uh, to make. The supporters or the voters queue behind the, um, the 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 poster of each candidate was carried out. But if that was carried out, then um, of course it would be plain for everyone to see. Uh -huh. um, do we still have you, Ibrahim Osino? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So so I, I don't know. What, what, what do you are you aware of the mode of voting uh, yesterday? It's a direct you okay. bring is an open, open, so, open, so you know, the, the you bring up. the post of each candidate. Okay, fantastic. And you keep behind it. And that was what happened. Go okay. and go and do your research. Okay. You'll find out fantastic. that's what happened. All right. And tell them, tell them to approach the National Appeal Committee. That will be set up by the National Body of Party. They should approach it and file their complaint. You know, I don't want you to bother yourself on allegations, allegations, allegations. Let's discuss facts. Okay. You know what I mean? Hmm. So, so, so basically, th this was open for everyone to see. Um, each, each, each voter very, very queued behind the the uh, the very poster very of their their preferred candidate. Okay, um, um, the APC has been bedeviled with um, internal crises and wranglings, um, uh, splinter units, parallel factions, parallel ex schools, parallel chairmen in some states of the federation, parallel ward um, uh, elections, and and state. Um, uh, elections or congresses as well. Um, in River State and in Zamfara State in the last elections, because of the plethora of court cases, the APC was not on the ballot in the general election. Uh, Opeimi and Ku are saying that uh, if this process was not cancelled, that they will have no other option um, but to go to court. In fact, they said, we, don't, we want the process to be cancelled because we don't want the committee to embarrass our party by forcing us to confront them in court. Um, are you not worried about the impact of any court process on the fortunes of the APC in, in, in Ekiti State? Don't forget, Fireshay is still around, and Wike is his friend. <laughs> Fire is my very good is my very good brother, and I can tell you in this coming election, it will be difficult landslide in Ekiti because of what the government, present government has done in Ekiti. Now, uh, there are some state statements you read out there that are dreadful in nature, and you know, uh, I don't really want to go. I'm not from Ekiti. I have no link with them. I don't really want to go more into their internal issue. But I can tell you that if they approach the court, the candidate and the party also will meet them at the court, you know, and most of them will be seeking renomination very, very soon. So they should take the party. I will encourage them to go to court and take the party there. Then we will see how it goes. So I don't want to make comments, you know, or political statement. I don't want to promote any one of them. So they should approach the court. Sometimes I said it, you can be a good loser. I've been a good loser for personal election that I won, the result, the result, I don't know, you know, I approached the appeal committee, you know, so it's not a big deal. I will encourage them to be a good loser and work for the party rather than wasting their resources and constituency money on the, on the field mission. So I can assure you, Fire Share will be defeated automatically. So, you know, his candidate and PDP are nowhere to be found in the PC, I can assure you that. So it's not a big deal. You know, 
the party leader who happens to be governor of fire, he will perform credibly well, will campaign, will showcase what he has done. This is his second time in office, and you know, he knows that he needs to file a return with the people of equity. So and the party has immense confidence in his leadership. So there's no there's no big deal about that, honestly speaking. There's no big deal about that. Okay, so, um, so ju ju just as we, you know, course this conversation down, one of the issues that have actually bedeviled, uh, you know, our democracy and the party politics is the issue of having internal democracy. Whether or not we want to agree uh, with some of the issues that have been raised and we say they are alleged, uh, of course, is still being left in the realm of an allegation until the facts have been put out there. But we still cannot, in our conscience and our subconscious, not take out the fact that the issue of internal democracy lacks in our political structure across you know, different political lines. So um, now, not talking as an APC um, you know, member, but speaking as a politician and as a Democrat, uh, what would you say and what can we do to build internal democracy in our system? You know, if you look at the text of the present bill that, uh, you know, Senator House of Reps has amended, you know, been, you know, sent to the president for our Senate. What I would say is that, you know, we need, we are still a developing nation. You know, a lot of things needs to be put in place in terms of, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know, echoing what internal democracy is. And I believe that the National Assembly has done a fantastic job in amending, you know, for you to do direct, indirect, or you know, uh, um, um, consensus candidate. And they have, you know, underneath has placed a stringent process, you know, for a candidate to be nominated. There has to be a ratification, there has to be this, there has to be that. So a lot of things. That's why I said we might not be able to discuss much until the president assented to the bill and we have something to discuss because it's going to be a brand new process. It's going to be a new process of nomination. And everybody will fit into that because it becomes law after the asset. So I would suggest that we should wait. You know, I support internal democracy and down for it. But this bill that we are waiting for to be assented to by the president will address most of these questions that you lay, you know, for me to answer. It will, ask, it will, it will make a good, you know, deal out of it. Once the president has sent to it, then I'll be glad to be here on other channels to discuss the internal democracy that APC government has pushed to Nigeria. You know, it doesn't, it, you know, it's everywhere. I'm not going to, it's, I'm not going to accept APC. It's everywhere. All the parties have this challenge of, you know, nomination and the rest, you know, for some people to believe. But if you win, if you are the winner, you won't say the process is not fair because you are not the winner. That's why you are saying you are going to court, you are going to this, you are going to. So I will encourage them to, to you know, to uh, to meet with the uh, national uh, um, uh, uh, what is it called national reconciliation or appeal committee, you know, so that they can vet their their concerns, you know, legitimately and be a party man. You know, you win some, you lose some, and in this case, they are all winners. You know, if you support the gentleman and see where we go from there, because the election is just around the corner. So internal democracy is crucial, and I'm sure APC government is working in that. And that's what this new electoral bill is addressing. So you can rest assured that APC will deliver a good electoral law for our country. Interesting there from you, uh, Ms. Ibrahim Oshino. Um, uh, we've had, um, Mercy, quite a, a number of uh, um, attempts to cancel primaries, um, protesting. Uh, uh, aspirants and all that, and it's, it seems to be a pattern. I mean, in the in the PDP primaries in Ekiti State, you had um, the likes of Ashegoni also, um, you know, um, protesting. And and uh, Biodo, Senator Biodo Lujimi uh, attended her letter withdrawing from the race um, just as or a day before the primary of PDP in uh, Ekiti State. We're seeing pictures and videos of uh, protests. The APC supporters of some other candidates went to the protests. The PDP supporters of the other candidates went to the protests and allegations of preferred or anointed candidates, you know, uh, by by uh, the power brokers and the powers that be in these political parties. Um, IFI a uh, former governor of Ekiti State, was quoted as saying, you know, that um, uh, you can't eat where you did not so. You know, you can't eat where you didn't work. So in other words, he's been he's been working in the party. He sold there, so it's his time to reap. Uh, there were there were pictures, even videos uh, showing the delegates going to show him their ballot paper, um, as put up by the cable 
um, newspaper online. And um, so, so it, it, it makes us, you know, worry about internal democracy and the politics of the strong man or the godfather, as it were. And um, um, Mr. Shino, or Shino, before you go, um, what do you say about this internal democracy and the politics of the strong man? Messi has asked you that question. Um, I mean, what don't we need to have a, a more open space, you know, a more open space where um, one person cannot be allowed to determine who emerges in a party? I think direct power will address that question. In, in direct power, you now you have almost about 500,000 party loyalists voting. So that's a direct power. That's a democracy. You know, showing me, because you can't say in my word, I have my loyalists. Nobody can take that. That's my right. I have my loyalists. That people will believe in me. So showing me their, um, their voting pattern does not really, really mean anything. And as long as that person is not more to vote or in the state of, you know, you know, um, uh, is in a state of uh, duress to vote for a particular. The gentleman, I saw the video, he went to go and vote on his own and he's coming back in his own volition, showed it to you, whoever he showed it to, you know, it's a PDP issue. But generally, I believe that our party needs to enhance all the parties in Nigeria need to enhance internal democracy. And as I said, this electoral bill, we are creating a lot of things. I will encourage you guys to have, you know, the copy of the amended bill and see what and what and the channel, even with the direct primary, even with the indirect primary and the consensus candidate. So these are the ingredients of, you know, expanding the cost of, you know, uh, a party nomination and internal democracy for all the parties in Nigeria. So I believe this, after signing of this bill, then we'll have a lot of things to talk about because most of the questions must have been addressed legitimately. Uh, with the law. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. Everybody has their own base. You know, you can't take a kid away from my fire. She's the two time governor of the state. He's a grassroots man. He went there every weekend to eat in your uh, uh, for, you know, he's a, he's a local man. He can go to the market and eat. He can go to anywhere and eat with them. So they see him. Uh, but what I can say is that APC would defeat him. If he likes, you should go and eat uh, a saru at uh, <laughs> EAKT. Flog him there this time around. It, so will, it will be a bad hopefully idea. I'm going to be, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be in the kitchen to, right. to work for our candidate. And I'm, I can assure you, if you like, you go and eat a saru, eat a or eat poly, we'll beat him this time around. Interesting. Um, it might not be a bad idea having um, Oyebanji also uh, going to buy some corn or some akara or something on the road so it can be put on social media because that's what the politicians uh, do. Uh, uh, I, I, saw, I, saw, I saw a collage, Messi, of. Um, of uh, um, uh, previous pictures from the likes of Atiko Boboka, Rocha Zokorocha, and co. when they went to eat corn on the street or plate hair, Amechi and co. And uh, someone said, well, we're hoping for the next one uh, to come around. It's quite interesting. But um, Ibrahim Osinawa, we want to thank you very much for your time. Yeah, I'm sure. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you here to, uh, to see you guys again. You know? All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's it. It's, it's, it has been an amazing conversation and uh, we do appreciate you uh, for sticking with us. We still have one more leg to go and when we come through, we'll be talking about the AFCON, the quarterfinals. Uh, the fact that you have some you know, teams falling out and those that are still, still in the game, what are the expectations of these teams? Hopefully we're being joined by sports journalists to make sense of all of this.